Live in front of an internet audience, it's the Vox Off Show starring Voxandra. And tonight's guest, Brad Smith! God bless the wheel, because it's the Salty Sash! Submit your questions for the Q&A! Featuring Winamp and the Press Play Band. I'm Cherry G Tables, and it's time to Vox Off! Hello everyone, and welcome to the Vox Off Show. I'm your host, Voxandra, and right behind me, as always, is my wonderful co-host, Tear D. Oh, hi! It is me, it the is one you. and only. Hey, we have a what? great show for you tonight. Brad Smith is our guest tonight. You may know him from his Twitch channel, Sakana Cat, or from the game he made for the NES in 2018, Lizard. Tonight, we'll discuss what it's like being the top two Espetra speedrunners in the world. And you all know who else is here. Who's always here? The best Wait, band ooh, ooh. with the best tunes! Can we get a huge hug? applause in the chat for Winamp and the Press Play Band! Chair, where's your box and pog? Where's your pog applause, chair? Oh, okay. Oh, pog applause oh, for the greatest I, band I, in the I, business. There. It's so good. My good. goodness. The best band in the business. They are ridiculously, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy how good they are. Oh my goodness. Never missing a freaking beat. Hey, remember to everyone, all alerts will be off during the show and any contributions will be acknowledged at the end. Also remember that we will be having an audience Q&A segment where you can ask us or our guest any question you want by using the link found in chat right now. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter how trivial or massive and deep the question is. If you're wondering it, you better ask it. Because I'll tell you, if you don't ask it, we ain't answering it. We won't do yeah. it. You might wonder what, like, I, I don't know, what Chair's favorite Crystal Light drink is. What flavor of Crystal Light Chair likes best. Maybe Chair doesn't even drink those types of like sugar-free drinks and whatnot, but uh, you yeah. won't know unless you ask, right, Chair? Well, no, about... no. They won't know unless they ask. They have to submit it to the Q and A. Oh no, no, it's not about me, but about what's your favorite milk? My favorite milk? I won't know. I won't tell them. They have to. They have to ask. <laughs> they have to ask. They want to know my favorite milk is. They have to ask. I'm, I'm sorry. Those are the rules. It's the rules of the show. And we adhere to them all the time. Chair. Chair. Hey, have you noticed yes? that the weather is getting cooler? Yeah. It's getting a little chilly. Yeah, it's not know? that hot anymore. Yeah, it's slowly getting cooler. But it's... you know what is still piping hot? <gasps> That's right. Oh. It's the scoops. It's the news. It's time for everyone's number one gaming news source, the Vox Off Show, to bring you the hot gaming scoops. That's right. Let's dive right in. Here we go. Oh, man. Did you guys catch that Matrix 4 trailer? You know, I still can't believe another Matrix movie is being made. Did you guys know that the time between Matrix 4 and the previous Matrix trilogy is the same amount of time between Star Wars and the prequels? <laughs> Don't worry, that feeling you're experiencing right now is just the very essence of time leaving your soul. It's all natural. It's all very natural. Anyway, interesting thing about the Matrix 4 trailer is that the original actor for Morpheus was not in it. 
which has led to fans speculating that Morpheus might be dead. The reasoning? He died in the Matrix MMO that ran about four years back between 2005 and 2009. It would be crazy if an MMO game was truly canon in the movie series, and honestly, has some strong implications that could spread out to other mediums. When interviewed about MMOs being canon to their series, local World of Warcraft 3 fan said, Please, please stop pouring salt into my wounds. I'm already dead. <laughs> Gross. It's so sad. <laughs> poor, poor World of Warcraft 3 fans. I'm sorry, yeah. Warcraft 3 fans, not World of Warcraft. Yeah, World of War World of Warcraft, Warcraft 3. Three. Damn, they <laughs> skipped two. What happened? To my two? goodness. Oh my goodness. That that's a slip right there. Oh, that War that Warcraft 3 fan we interviewed isn't going to be happy about that one either. I just I just twisted that knife right there. I just twisted it. Oh my goodness. Oh man. Speaking of World of Warcraft though, that old Blizzard is at it again, with doing everything in its power to have any sort of good PR they can muster. This time, it's with the names of achievements in WoW, which they are renaming in an attempt to be more palatable. For example, the achievement Bros before Ho Ho Ho's is being renamed to Holiday Bromance. And the achievement My Sack is Gigantic, the one you'd get for purchasing a gigantic bag, is being renamed to My Storage is Gigantic. The change is similar to how they've been changing the names of characters who are named after de developers who were named in the harassment lawsuits and further emboldens Blizzard's efforts to try and salvage their reputation. Because, as everyone knows, the best way to make an abusive work environment more tolerable is to be polite enough to not tell a ball sack joke while kicking you in the balls. You gotta... <laughs> You gotta be polite yeah. about the abuse, right, Chair? That's that's how you yeah, solve the issue, right? Yeah, you just be polite yeah. about I, it. You just clean it up and everything, you know? Yeah, my, my balls are 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 clean. Chair, that's uh, not that's not here nor there. Oh my goodness. Uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Chair, no one no one needed to <laughs> uh, uh, Hey, do you guys like Kickstarter? You know. That website famous for indie startups trying to get fun the funding they need to make their dream projects a reality? CD Projekt just had a successful Kickstarter get funded. That's right, a crowdfunding project for a manga called The Witcher Ronin, which was set to a goal for about $107,000, has reached over triple that amount and has been funded. You know, I'm just so glad to see Kickstarter really helping out the small guy get their dreams funded. Because without this, I don't know how a little company worth only $8 billion like CD Projekt could have made this a reality. How, how could they have funded that chair? They, they, yeah, they, they, they needed to crowdfund that money to make that project happen. Yeah, they, they, only have, they only have $8 billion. How could they afford yeah. it? Yeah, how? how, how? That's, that's not possible. It's just like, not possible. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Hey, uh, speaking of crowdfunding, does everyone remember Star Citizen? You know, that <gasps> space game that's been in development for years as they inhale crowdsourced money faster than Kirby? Some oh. of you might be aware that they sell ships that you can buy for the game. You know, when it comes out. And some of these ships can go for thousands of dollars. You think gotcha whales are nuts for spending thousands on JPEGs? Call me when they do as Star Citizen fans do. Spend thousands on a ship that doesn't even exist yet. Sounds bad, right? Well, <laughs> bad enough that someone complained to the UK's Advertising Standards Authority, and now Cloud Imperium Games has been forced to put disclaimers that what you're paying for is something that's in development and you can't actually use yet. It wasn't in the ad it wasn't in the ads then. It was just hey, buy this ship. By the way. With the ridiculous development time Star Citizen has, which I believe is now at about nine years, it seems crazy that they're still taking people's money for content that doesn't exist yet. When asked about this, a representative of the company said, We here at Cloud Imperium Games believe that our fans hold two things to be extremely important to our game. To be funded by the people, for the people, and to be the most immersive space simulation ever. 
That is why the development experience is designed to achieve both of these things for the backers by the only way that seems fitting. By having the development be a black hole of money. <laughs> Jerry, you gonna go buy, well, a, buy a ship for Star Citizen? Yes, and I'm gonna it, drive it into that black hole. <laughs> when, when it finally exists, right? Like when, when, the ship, when the ship finally is able for you to play, right? Oh, no, don't worry about that. We will find its, its existence in the black hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. You know it isn't a black hole, though? Wait, wait. The show that we have for you tonight. That's right. We're not a black hole. We're a sun bursting with energy and game ing. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Gamers and gentlemen, we have an amazing show for you tonight. Brad Smith is here. The Salty Session is waiting to spice up your night. But first, our week in review. See you there. Hi there, I'm Brad Smith, also known as Sakana Cow on Twitch. And your lizard is the lizard of Vox Off Show with Voxandra and Chair G Tables. Okay, I'm gonna trust this. Uh... Chair G Tables! Hello, how are you? Oh, uh, well, we gotta know the, the real answers of how am I, and you already know the answer. I'm hungry. <laughs> oh no, did you not eat before the show again? Yeah, because guess what I was doing? Oh my god, what were you doing? <laughs> I had two Vortex Gallery tournaments before this. <laughs> two? Yeah. Listen. What, what were they in? Uh, all right, let, let me tell you something. I'm I'm actually very surprised because like you know I I had wind jammers today and I couldn't beat anyone. I got O2 so fast. O2 in wind way. jammers. Oh wow. I got O2 in wind jammers and I I got I got one of the one of the legendary players at first and then I still lost on losers anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, it's absolutely wrecked. Do you even practice wind jammers? I, I did! I did! Oh, I was wow. I was practicing. And and then I was like I was like, oh, okay, you know what? I, I practice this. I I I bet the And I miss it's weird because okay, like right after that I got the Jackie Chan tournament. I got <laughs> I got the Jackie Chan fighting game and that one listen, I did not the only time I ever played that game was with you. <laughs> <laughs> did did the Vox Off show properly prepare you? For fighting against Maybe them in Jackie did. Chan? Maybe it did. At least opened my eyes. And I, I I was I was right. I was like I am indeed a Thor Thorsten player, and all I just needed to do was, you know, that one, that one hour, at, like before tournament started, because you know I just finished Windjammers. I I looked up their stream and watching their exhibition matches, and I was like, okay, okay, I understand. I gotta do this. And I looked at their resources. They have, they have a Jackie Chan Fist of Fire Bible. <laughs> Bible? Ooh, nice. And it, co it both comes with a, a, the New Testament and an Old Testament. So you went biblical <laughs> on them? Yeah, no, I, I was I was going through them on stream. I was I was trying to learn how to play the game through the Bible. Ten and minutes listen, before it, your matches. It helped. it helped! The Bible was useful! <laughs> what was the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament of the Old Testament was a lot more about like 
you know, the the technicalities. It, it shows you, like, all the frame data of each character. The New Testament is written more like a tutorial, like, telling you, oh, yeah, this is how jumping works. Don't jump. It sucks. It take too long in the air, and you're gonna get anti-eared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can kind of see, from playing the game, I can see why jumping is just the worst idea ever. Yeah, it's so slow. It's like Tekken one slow, <laughs> and and Virtual Fighter one. Just it's floating in slow. the air. Woo! <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're just. It's just a free anti air, <laughs> but, but yeah, like, um, I did practice that, and then Kianta two. Like, I'm like, oh, I didn't have time to practice, but but guess what? I saw the Kianta two match for you, where you got knocked <laughs> out. That was brutal. <laughs> Chair uh, no, was... got obliterated. <laughs> I was sad, but listen, that was before top eight. Two games I barely practiced, and I I almost got to top eight. Almost, almost. <laughs> Sounds like you need to I practice. Almost... <laughs> you know, you know the you know the commentators for both games. Even though I'm not really active in those games, they. They recognize me. <laughs> yeah, the famous chair G tables. Yeah, I was I was shocked because like you know like like in what, what do you call that like in in the in the Jackie Chan tournament there was like oh it's chair G tables from the VTuber fighting game tournament. <laughs> Ooh, I'm so like, fancy. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I, I mean I don't I, it's just a few that I entered, but I'm like okay, wow. But I think I guess, you, you I also did something important this week, didn't you? You think you uh, built a new computer? Oh, yeah, I did. And in fact, in fact, listen, listen, listen. I I no longer have to use two computers. <laughs> <laughs> I can stream PC games using only one computer now. <laughs> and I, I you're moving your... up in the world, Chair. Look at that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't have to use a capture card anymore. In fact, you know, I have to use two computers to do the to do the Vox off show. But what, what, what did you only need? using one? What did you need two for for this? Oh my goodness! Oh, one to run VTube Studio and one to run the game without lagging. <laughs> and this. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Okay, okay. Oh, that's funny. That's very funny. <laughs> Well, it's fantastic. You have a new one set up, so you can do that now. Maybe now you won't, like, keep crashing in VR chat, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. It, of, That'll yes, be exciting. Def this will definitely help it. This will. I haven't tried it yet. I haven't oh. tried it yet. We'll but, try but, it at some point. But guess what? Like, like, despite it running minor ultra adventures, the most unoptimized game ever, it's running <laughs> at full FPS and, and able to play Guilty Gear, Gear Strive at full FPS. And, like... <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's so good. Guess what? What? It can't run my old games at full FPS. <laughs> <laughs> Lame Dimension it... games are too powerful for modern PCs. That's just the truth. <laughs> how can they? How can they deal with it? I don't know. As a mage, like I really SMH. think it's a compatibility issue. But you know what that means? If I sup if I speed run Super Ledge Hop, yeah, even Super Ledge Hop is affected. Actually, if I speed run Super Ledge Hop, I have to do the com two computer setup again. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Well, chair, you wanna know what I did this week? Well, what did you do? I played more Deus Ex again because it was so much fun. Oh my gosh. More more yeah, shenanigans like and everything. About it. It's so fun to play. Just like Ah. Uh, now that I know all the different secrets and tricks, like taking a rifle and making it super powerful, and you just pop all the cameras out instantly and like can get headshots no scope from far away because you just click on them and there's like no variance with your aim. It's just like, boo, oh, they're dead. Okay, cool. And it's just yeah. like I'm just even sillier now the way I go through the game, and it's a ton of fun. So Wait. that's that's a good portion of what I was doing. So you know, just playing that again, which is fun. Wait, how 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 many times have you flipped this game? Flipped this game? Um, I this is the second time I'm playing it. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah oh, you fun. never heard the term "flip the game"? That means beating the game. <laughs> I've never heard that used for that. What? Ever. Oh I've my! Never is this in my life. Thing? I've never. It has to be. I've never heard someone say "flip the game" for playing multiple times. What? Like, when oh you said my... flip the game, all I thought was, uh, World Flipper, which I also played this week. 
<laughs> nice transition. <laughs> I've been I've been known to transition nicely. Uh so World Flipper uh is a gotcha game that's a pit pinball RPG type game combat thing. And like you you have your characters, they fly around the screen and you knock them up like pinball and they smack into everything and kill the enemies and it's really fun. Um of course global version nerfed re-rolling because all global versions have to be inferior in some way, you know. So which is the trend with global gacha games, they always have to do something to make it inconvenient for everyone. But the game's fun. I already dropped it, <laughs> but it's <laughs> it's enjoyable. I want to play it, but I just like, I don't know. I, I, I just wasn't, um, once I completed all the story stuff, it's like play four times per day. You're done in 10 minutes. Okay, bye. And I was just like, I am bored. I don't feel like, I don't feel like keeping up with it. I'm bored. I can't, I can't keep up with too many gotcha games. Y you know what I'm saying? And it's just, yeah, it's too much. So I ended up playing some Super Nintendo pinball games afterwards and, uh, they almost all suck. What? Like, yeah, some of the Super Nintendo pinball games are just ported from the Amiga, and, like, the board is huge, and the way the board moves around is really hard to describe, but it also moves left and right, as well as up and down, so you can't tell when the ball is heading towards the flipper, and it'll just, like, fly down, you can't react to it, and it's really bad. And, like, the board is just, like, this JPEG that a JPEG of a ball is moving around, and you're like, okay, cool. Oh, it looks yeah. so janky. And then the other ones are kind of weird too. One of them had like an Evangelion title screen for pinball and like What really? It was it was just like the way it was designed was really weird. It's 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 hard to really describe these, but they they are not good. Except for uh I found some Japanese pinball games. One where you play as like you have like a common rider pinball and Ultraman hitting different enemies and stuff and it's themed like that. And that was really cute. But there was also um I think it's a uh, Jockey Crush or something. That game is like this gothic, brutal looking pinball game. And it was so much fucking fun, Chair. Like your pinball is this like magical orb and you're like destroying demons with it and shit. With all these different bonus rooms and everything. And the music was fucking slapping. And it was so much fun. It was really, really good. Holy like I, like, I want to play it again because it was really fun. <laughs> But is it better than Space Cadet Pinball for the Windows XP? I mean, what really can compare to Space Cadet Pinball for the Windows <laughs> XP? But that that's like, that's just unfair to try to compare things to that, right? That's, that's yeah. the top tier shit up there. There has to be a version of that that runs in like modern... Uh, Modern yeah, there is. Stuff, right? I always install it whenever I install a new computer. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So you made sure to do that with your new computer this time? Yes. Fantastic. Always. So the other the other game I played this week was uh I played Lizard by uh by our guest tonight, Brad Smith. I re replayed Lizard yesterday so that people could see it. It's an NES um I guess I would say like Metroidvania kind of game. Exploration type game where you put on a lizard and go on an adventure. Literally, you wear a lizard. Like a suit. And so there's different lizards that have different types of abilities and whatnot. And it's like, uh -huh. my lizard is the lizard of knowledge. And so you can read text and stuff. And one is, my, my lizard is the lizard of surf. And so you can go surfing on the water and everything. And there's a whole surfing boss you have to fight. And it's really, really cute. And it's really good. It's like the right level of challenging, I feel. And uh, yeah, it, you it's, have it's, an my interest. it's an NES game that came out in 2018. Yeah, I, play, I played it on the Mister with the NES core. You should play now it sometime, Chair. You would like it. I will have to. Oh, if if I knew a bit about it earlier, I would have tried it on the Soja Boy console. <laughs> oh my God, that would have been amazing. <laughs> I, I know it can Boy run it because console. it has an NES emulator. <laughs> oh my fucking God. That would be that would be nuts. Yeah, but you know what? God is good. If we're gonna if we're gonna talk about Lizard, then I think it's I think it's time that we just get our guest on for tonight. Oh oh yes yes that makes yes. sense to me right right yeah everyone yeah. uh Brad Smith who you might know on Twitch as Saka Nakao, is a game developer who also uh streams as well is a very entertaining person I feel. And if you're not familiar with them, well, we have a short clip right here.
going non stop. Go 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 go. Okay, you still does that me. count? <laughs> what? Whoa! Look what we did. This is new. <laughs> like uh, we found hey, the so negaverse. <laughs> oh, cool! This is I've never seen this. This is this is nice. I thought I thought it would count because you you. you uh, the portal <laughs> to the to the light dimension. Wow! Look at that. <laughs> this is nice. That's Hold cool. on, I'm gonna... Welcome to the Vox Off Show, Brad Smith. How are you? Hi, everybody. I'm doing pretty well. I, uh, so that clip, that was some Battletoads, wasn't it? Yeah, I was, I was playing, uh, with a friend of mine every week. We were playing over net play two player Battletoads, which, uh, we finally accomplished a couple of weeks ago. That was, that was an adventure. That took us like a year. A year? Well, we played like once a week. But uh, yeah, when we Whoa. when we started, we could both beat Battletoads pretty easily. <laughs> but like two player uh, plus net play lag, there's it took a long time to figure out. Oh, with net play lag and whatnot. Um, Wait, what? <clears throat> Go ahead, Jer. Sorry. No, I was just gonna say, is it? Wouldn't net play? Isn't net play lag not that big when it when you play it on like you know current net play standards nowadays? Um, well, the rollback. So with two player games, uh, with rollback, as long as what you're doing only has to do with you and not the other player, um, it's okay if the other player is rolling back and and kind of a little bit out of sync with what they're doing. But anytime you have to interact or do something coordinated. Then we had to work out like techniques for for getting things in sync. Because like oh. Discord chat is also delayed. I don't know. We had to figure out ways to synchronize ourselves. Oh. I guess Battletoads <laughs> is a game that requires enough precise stuff in co-op that you need it to be like as close as possible in order to, to do that. A lot of levels, if one player goes on and the other player doesn't, they get scrolled off the bottom of the screen and they just die or something like that. So oh, my yeah. goodness. Mm -hmm. And it's not a game where if one player dies, the other player can go on, usually. Um, actually, in that clip, like we got, I got to the top of the level, and my friend Jordy, he fell off just before the end. Sometimes, if you touch the end of the level quickly enough, it lets you go on, even though one of the players died. But not, not in that level. That level, everything turned to a different color. It was weird. Huh. So, like, if the other person dies, you just you can't beat the level. You have to like redo the whole thing, or yeah, usually it restarts to the the previous checkpoint if either player dies. That's ridiculous. Okay, I can it's see so... why it took you a year. Yeah, like it's a game known for its difficulty, but then you add this second player mode, which, um, you know, was clearly not the primary focus of the game either. It was just there. <laughs> Hey, let's but it throw works. This in. Well, it works enough that we can beat it. There's one level that's broken, and we just have to let one player die and continue. Oh wow! To, <laughs> to get past it. It reminds they, they me they fixed how... that in the later versions, but not in not in the original release. Well, that's interesting. I um, what I was saying is it it reminds me of a uh, on a party once I uh had a competition when everyone was over to see like who would sleep on the couch we have and who sleeps on the floor. And so mm -hmm. the competition I had was, uh, it, it was a pullout couch that like was large enough for two people. So I was like, okay, everyone split off into teams of two who, uh, who you want to, uh, try to, try to be, win, win the competition with. And if you both win, you guys get the bed. And so what the competition was, was team Battletoads. And cause mm -hmm. what I noticed was in Battletoads, you each have a separate score. And so oh, yeah. what, I, what I did was, uh, everyone has a team. And it's uh, your score for your team is not a combined score. It's the score of whoever game overs first. Because when you game over, it shows that person's score. So what everyone had to do was uh, you could have the strategy where one person gets all the kills and gets all the points. And the other person doesn't. But then that person has to be the one who dies first. Otherwise, your score is zero. Or you just both play normally and try to go as far as possible and try to get a good score. And it was very stressful and great. And I loved it. <laughs> I loved watching everyone do that. Battletoads competitions. 
be so interesting. So are you saying I'm the only one that shotguns the bathroom? <laughs> shotgun? I'm gonna sleep in the bathroom. I would... I'd be like, get the hell out of there. People gotta pee. What, what if they wake up in the middle of the night and they gotta use the bathroom and someone's just sleeping in there? <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. When I did that, I'm like, oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let me go out. <laughs> Oh my god, Cher. Cher, you're ridiculous. <laughs> so, Brad, um, you are a game developer, correct? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. Um, Wait, where did well, you currently, I'm an independent game developer. Um, but a few years ago, like I was working for other people. When, uh, when did you start with all that? What got you into um, it? Let me think. So it was, I don't know, like I, I was, when I was a kid, I found a book in the library and it was like basic for kids and I brought home the book and my dad showed me how, where our basic program was on the computer and I'd type programs in from the book, see what they did. Um, so I got into computer programming at a fairly young age and I remember those. I was... And I was really into computer games. Like we had the we had an Atari ST, that was our first computer. And I just loved it. And by the time I got to university, I got really interested in like computer graphics and stuff like that. So I um I thought games might be a, a good place to look for a career. And that's what I did. So like my first job was at a company called Obsidian Entertainment. Uh -huh. um they're known for making kind of like crpg games um it's kind of funny like my the, the first game i worked on was this aliens license game that never released and it never came out yeah and i i didn't know getting into the games industry but like now i know um i've heard i've heard a statistic that like less than 50 percent of professional um software projects fail like just don't make it to release from whenever they start and that sounds huh. about right like quite a lot uh, actually yeah <laughs> well it seems like a lot like actually being there and seeing the things that go wrong it's it, it, it might be higher than that the rate of failure but um it's like it's a thing you have to get used to if you want to be in the games industry, like a lot of the stuff you work on is just never going to make it out there. Um, you have to be at peace with that. If That's you really want to stay. A lot of people, a lot of people don't stick around in the games industry. And I, in a way I haven't like I going independent, you know, now I'm, I don't answer to anybody. If I want to release something, I can. Right. I just have to make it. Yeah, like, I, it, it's a statistic that I'm kind of surprised about. Like, it makes sense, but at the same time, you would think they would still try to polish it up and just release it to get as many sales as they possibly can to recoup costs on it, rather than just scrapping yeah, the whole thing. That, that That's surprising yeah. to hear. Um, Well, it's also a little bit different. It depends how you want to publish something. Like, something like Steam or itch.io, like, very easy to self-publish. Um... Oh yeah, but especially in years past, if you, if you had to deal with like a whole manufacturing cycle for um, like a game console, uh, you know they don't release anything without putting money into marketing, all sorts of things that cost a lot of money beyond what it costs to develop. Um, so a lot of times things just get thrown away. They don't consider it worth their time when they could focus their money on something else that might have a better return. You know. That does make sense. Huh. I, yeah, when you put it that way, I, I get it. It's just, um, I guess it was just surprising. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's, there, there's a lot of, there, well, there's a lot of websites that kind of, um, I think it's like Unseen64 or whatever it's called. There's, there's other websites that kind of try and collate all these unreleased things that people can find. You hear about unreleased prototypes and stuff like that. And oftentimes right. when they play them, like it seems like a finished game and you wonder what happened. And there's, I don't know, there's just so much about releasing a game that goes beyond the development part of it that, yeah, a lot of it just gets thrown away, basically. That's really interesting. And you wonder what's out there. And and we yeah. only know like the tip of the iceberg, like most of this stuff just 
disappears. People might take records. And that's really weird to me. Like a lot of it, some game companies, they might keep good records and like have everything they've ever worked on. But like, that's not, I don't even know if that's most of them. Like, I think a lot of stuff just doesn't get preserved. It's like, we need, we need these discs. We need this hard drive space. We're just going to erase it and make a new erase thing. the game. We developed it like almost to completion <laughs> rather than buying yeah. a new hard drive. Let's just toss that. That's. Because you think they would save it to maybe repurpose it for something else, you know what I mean? So it's just... Yeah. It's interesting to see how some companies run things sometimes, you know? <laughs> it's definitely... I think there's definitely some uh, hilarious things some people do, but... And in some in some ways it does make sense, but... So uh, when, when was it that you decided you rather... What was it? Was it um a conscious conscious decision to go independent or was it just you started working on things and said you know what i'm gonna keep doing this what uh what brought you in that direction well okay so obsidian was my first job in the industry and i liked it there um i left for personal reasons not not anything to do with obsidian i still think they're a cool place um but i wanted to come home uh to i'm from canada i had moved to california to work there mm. Um, but basically I, I wanted to come home to be closer to like where my family is and stuff like that. I moved back to Canada and I got involved with a startup company for a while. Um, and there we were kind of working remotely. So like some people were in California and other places of the world. Um, and that company, we did release one game. It was, it was, uh, Yars Revenge. Like it's, it's sort of a yeah. remake of the Atari 2600 shoot 'em up. Wait, is this the PS2 one? Uh, it was released for PC and Xbox 360, I think. I think um, I know which one this is. I that's think another I one where we made a PS3 version. Like I, I did all the work for, personally to make it work on PS3, and it just never got released <laughs> on PS3. <laughs> Wait, is is this the yard shooter that plays like a rail shooter? Yeah, exactly. You're the wow. Okay. <laughs> so we released wow. that. We worked on. Oh yeah, I think what was it called? Guitar, Rocksmith. We worked on Rocksmith. Ah, Rocksmith. We didn't know okay. what it was called, and it was there was kind of a a weird relationship between our company and uh, Ubisoft, who were making it. Wait, they, you like, didn't know what it was called? Some stuff. We, well, we didn't know what the game was called at the time. I think the project was called Guitar Rising. Um, huh. And like the startup company I was working for, it was being run by some kind of shady people. So uh, like there's a lot going on. <laughs> that, oh my goodness. Especially when you're remote, you don't really know what's happening. Like you, you That's find a good out point, a actually. Later on. Um, but yeah so we we worked on it for a while like we made some stuff for it and then you know that contract ended or whatever like we just stopped working i thought the game was never going to be released and then like a couple years later rocksmith came out i'm like wait it's ubisoft it's a guitar game is this the game we worked on and we looked at the credits and the credits just say ducks mini game kill switch entertainment no mention of anybody's name we did more stuff than just a mini game, but like oh that's what God. we got credited for. This like game where you shoot ducks by playing notes on a guitar. I so it's really what? strange. That is really strange. The game just comes out and you're like, did we, did we make this? <laughs> Hold on a second. I think we made this game. What the hell? But when we saw that, I remember someone saying, "That's the credit we deserve." <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Cause... I think with the way the relationship between the two companies was going. Wait, did they Jeez. did they do anything about that? <laughs> because it's, it's... Oh, it, there's there's no uh, rules about game credits. I mean, the games are generally better about crediting people now, but they're not necessarily that accurate or oh. complete. Um, which, which I hear is actually like a super important thing to have your name in the credits and stuff so you can use it as like sources for your work and everything. It definitely can be. Um, that's one of those things that, you know, like 
people people have been talking about for years and years about like game development unions and like if that actually happened game that's what it would take to get game credits actually be a a consistently meaningful thing but a lot of yeah a lot of credits are very incomplete or just wrong or um even now it's better than it used to be and most most things are better um about that kind of information like a lot of big companies have policies of uh just credit anybody who's worked in any capacity on the game at all and then you get like these giant lists of everybody in every department uh which is kind of cool but also if you're trying to figure out who's who's really responsible for one thing or another it's kind of hard to sort through all the information right i guess it depends uh, how they set it up and everything yeah, I like, I like the credits. They'll also... have the Kickstarter backers. Like the credits will just be like a million names long. Oh yeah, there's that too. I I remember somebody I knew who worked at like a large company. I forget what which one, but he told me that he, uh, their policy was you can only be credited on three games per year. And so he'd do work Aww. on a bunch of stuff, but he'd have to pick the games that he actually got credit on. Which what? Is... That's yeah. bizarre. <laughs> All right, you only got credits for three. Everything else, you just no one, no one, no one may know that you worked on this. <laughs> no one may find out. Tell no one. I've also known people who have requested their name to be removed from credits of games that they did not want to be known for. Now that now that reminds me of Kickstarter credits where everyone wanted their names removed, like oh. like with Mighty Number no. Nine, where it's just like a sea of generous backers. Because so many people wanted their names removed from <laughs> Generous backer, wow. And so yeah, they were put so instead of the name, it'll say generous backer and like the number of who they are. And then there's just like a sea of them, so the name isn't in there. <laughs> it's really funny. Tragic, but also pretty funny. Yeah, I can imagine if a game's um, like a total train wreck, they're just like, don't put my name on this. I don't don't do that. Um but yeah, so like after I did, did that startup company, we did that game and then it kind of fell apart at the end. Um, to, to get the Yars Revenge game finished, like basically like the people running the startup company were removed from the company and we contact, uh, Atari was, was the publisher on that. So they hired like a couple of the developers who were still, still cared about the game to finish it basically. So I like, I was working directly for Atari for like a month or two just to finish it up. Mm. Um, I don't know. That was a weird situation. But after that I, happened, like I'd met I some, hear Atari's I a big name friends. these days. Atari has been a name owned by several companies over the years. It's kind yeah. of kind of a, well it's got a weird history <laughs> like i like i had this thought of oh you worked for atari technically that's pretty cool and then i thought about it again i'm just like oh, boy what does that actually mean anymore <laughs> that that is always a good question i think about atari <laughs> but um so after after that um i found a contract job where i was working not directly on games but like for on game technology uh for a while and i just kind of saved up and during that time like I really wanted to be working on a game instead of like on tools to make a game. Um, so I just, hmm. I was thinking about projects that I might want to do. And then eventually that contract was running out and it looked like they were shutting down. So I thought, well, I've got some savings. Maybe I can, maybe it's time. I made a game, finally made a game of my own. And that's, that's basically when I started working on Lizard. Lizard. And I wonder what year that was. That was probably... I don't know what year that would have been. You worked it might have been for like a few years, right? 2014? It might have been... I don't know. Somewhere around there. Oh, wow. Maybe 2013. I, I was working on Lizard for quite a while. <laughs> and I can't... I th it was probably like 2014 when I started working on it actively. Um, like, but I just got really interested in the NES specifically. I'm pointing at my NES. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I found a program to make music for the NES. It was called Family oh. Tracker. 
Oh um, yeah, that one. It's so cool. It's it's a really great program for making music, but like the thing about it is like you you plug in notes to it and they come out sounding exactly like an NES. Like it's perfectly good emulation of the sound and it nice. it obeys all the rules. <laughs> and um I had run into that program just as a joke. A friend well, a friend of mine was having a, a mix C D party where we all like burn a bunch of mixed CDs for each other. This was this was a while ago. <laughs> Um, Back in the day when we would do things like that, mix CDs. Yeah. So like the it was everybody's supposed to make a mix CD and we'd we'd all trade mix CDs. Like you'd make a stack of ten of them and everybody would get one of yours. And you'd end up with ten mix CDs. And uh I just found this program and I thought, well, what if I what if I just took a really famous album and turned it into NES. So I started working <laughs> on a version of Dark Side of the Moon, like Pink Floyd's best-selling album <laughs> for the NES. And I got like two-thirds of the way through. I didn't oh finish it in time for the party. And I had to tell everyone, I'll, I'll send you something eventually. <laughs> I didn't actually finish it. Right after that, like, I think I started my job at Obsidian and then like it was a couple of years before I got around to finishing it. <laughs> and I like <laughs> sent out to like these 10 people. Finally, hey, have it's it. actually finished. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about not giving you a CD a while ago. I promise I was working on it. Um, that must have been really cool, though. That got me really interested in that was sort of the start of my YouTube channel. Like I just uploaded videos I thought were interesting to my YouTube channel for a couple of years. And then there's this and it kind of went mildly viral for a little while you definitely have a lot of cool videos on your youtube channel i've, I've watched quite a few of them like the development of lizard and everything and like the thought process Ooh. behind it with the architecture of the nes and everything you talk about it's really cool um yeah well i'm trying to i'm trying to do more videos i'm actually working on a couple of videos along those lines of a, a game i recently worked on um Oh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So I got into the music of it, and um, I started talking to people on forums, uh, like who were like the Family Tracker forums, who were talking about making music and stuff. And people would ask stuff about, can the NES really do this or this or that? And I thought I should just buy an NES and test it and see what happens. Yeah. And that's what I did. And I got so I I learned the things I wanted to know about a sound chip, but then I got interested in how the system works because i would never actually written any programs for an old piece of old computing hardware before like i'd i'd been a professional programmer but i'd never tried on something that old and this is right. the stuff i grew up with it would have been i always like dreamed like what if i could make a super nintendo game and, yeah. and play my own game on the thing but all that i could do cool. is play dos games that i made or whatever because that was you know accessible and open I didn't know anything about how video console worked, but then, right. yeah, the more I learned about it, it just became a really fascinating machine. And I thought by the time this time rolled around that I thought I should make a game. Maybe I should make an NES game. Maybe that's what I should do. So Lizard was one of a bunch of ideas I had. And actually I thought, I think originally it was going to be more like, um, lost vikings kind of puzzle game the idea is about, huh. like you'd have a couple lizards in a room and you'd have to figure out how to use this power and that power and that power to get through this particular challenge and then there'd be a new level right um and i don't know at what point it changed into kind of a that concept but open world where right. there's only one of each lizard and they're they're far, far apart and you have to kind of begin more about exploring and figuring out what there is in the world it's it's definitely um, interesting like i really i really like the structure of the game just like because when i try to describe it it's kind of like a metroidvania i, w I would say would be a description would you agree with that or in yeah some respect? um it's funny because like met like metroid is a a big touchstone that i would kind of compare it against but i also tried to do things that metroid wouldn't so in some ways it's like anti-metroid and sometimes it, in some ways it's very 
similar to Metroid, um, especially in, especially like the the first Metroid where you can kind of go a bunch of places at once, mm. and you're not sure which which to go first uh, or what to do. But like the ways it's anti Metroid, like I didn't want um, an accumulating collectible power level like just more right. and more missiles or whatever you do or more and more energy um i wanted to keep it to just you have a, you have a lizard and that's all you have you could have a different lizard but you can only get one at a time you have to make a choice and that the the state of the game should just be really quiet it's just you're this and this and see what you can do um it definitely has and a nice probably... atmosphere like that and everything with it. Like for, for people who don't know, in this game, you you explore a very large world that has like two opposite sides. So it's like two worlds connected through doors and stuff like that. And uh, you wear a lizard, literally. You wear a lizard like a suit and each of the different lizards gives you a different ability. Like one lets you bounce off the ground. One lets you uh, swim in the water. One lets you heat things up or turn to stone to block things. And you only... um. You can only wear one lizard at a time. So where you can explore and what you can do in the world depends on which lizard you have. And that kind of determines how you explore around and switch your lizard around and fight different bosses based on the different lizard powers that you get. And it's, it's definitely interesting like that. Yeah. Um... Oh, I forget what my <laughs> train of thought was. Oh, you were saying how it's like anti-metro and that you don't accumulate powers, you switch between different ones and Yeah, so you get a lizard, but you're you're in a place and you don't necessarily know where to use that lizard. So you have to do more exploring mm. to find something that fits that. And I made it so that you could get to most of the game or almost all of the game with any of them. Like you don't really need powers to get around the game but it, each of them makes it easier in some way and in some specific situations um, the, the other thing so one of, the, one of the things that's kind of oh yeah so like the Metroidvania genre I, I've played so many examples of it like I love Metroidvania games for a long time I like Super Metroid was my favorite game um, but I also felt that there was just so many examples of that now. Like there's, there's a new one coming out all the time. Yeah. And, you know, there's, there's lots of really great ones. Um, but I, w I wanted to do something that was getting a, a little, getting a bit away from the common mechanics of that. And that's, um, kind of why I went that way for Lizard. The other thing I was doing which is a thing I didn't realize how weird it was until I released the game and sort of got a lot of a lot more opinions a lot more people sharing their opinion about it but just um NES games largely did not have save systems like some did but it was okay. a small minority of them I like the um, passwords that were like... 32 characters long shout outs to spiritual warfare thanks yeah, you could have long passwords <laughs> sometimes. Um, like RPGs would often have a save system because they were intended to be a really long play of game. So I made Lizard with it in mind that you can just pre press reset and start over. And I wanted like the inventory just to be your memory of the game, basically. Like it should take you, maybe it'll take you hours to find a boss and a lizard and put them together. Um, but if you were to come back the next day, it should be a lot faster. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's kind of the idea about it, but like the, that structure of a game, it, it's, it's a bit more obtuse than I thought it would be to most people. Cause like, we haven't had a system that doesn't have built-in saves since the like 16 bit era. Right. Um, just like every every game has a save, unless unless it's a flash game, you're supposed to play in thirty minutes. <laughs> even then, they might have now. a save. Like even flash games have saves. <laughs> you yeah. can save in a web browser. <laughs> um, and that and that's so I could have I could have designed Lizard for a battery save, 
and I don't know. That would be a different game. I'm I'm happy with the way it came out, but I I was actually genuinely genuinely surprised by not that people were a, it, it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. I think not having a save because um, I do some kind of some people think it's mean the way I. I put the passwords together and what it saves and what it doesn't in the password. Um, uh, I don't know if I want to explain all the details <laughs> for well, someone. I, I, who's I, I know there's a there's... password section, but I feel like um, there was a time I put it in. And I don't think it saved me beating a boss when I went through the password once. Yeah. And so like, I wanted that to be a surprise. I didn't want that to be mean, like in the way that I think it should be quick to get back to it the next time. In the same way that, like, if you put Mario 3 in, like, you can get to whatever world you want to get to if you know where the warps are. Like, yeah, it's a game you can yeah. play through in one sitting. Yeah, I, um, I really think so, too, especially since I've I've just watched the speed run. It's like 18 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So, like, I want it to be a game that eventually you can get through it quickly. Um, but it's not obvious that it's that way from the start and that's also intentional i wanted it to be mysterious when you put it in and you don't really know what's in this or where you could go i saw one review of lizard that. where somebody um you know found a lizard found a boss beat the boss and they thought the game was over <laughs> and like there's a reason they thought the game was over i did put kind of an ending sequence that makes it look that way but the text um, of the ending sequence says, like, uh, this is, you found a ending, but it's not the end of the story or something or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it says there's more written on the page at the end. At, like, this kind of soft ending you get from a boss. So, like, that was supposed to be, okay, you've played one session. If you want to turn it off now, it's, it's probably a good time, and you can come back tomorrow. Um, so when I made the PC version, I just put in, like, an autosave system just because... With the NES, it's a dedicated thing. You understand when you turn it off, you're turning it off, and yeah, it only does this one thing. But like, you have a game that runs on your computer. You know, you run everything else on your computer, your web browser, all those things. So I can't expect uh, a lot of those kind of intuitive things about turning something off don't apply. And it, so I, yeah, I put in I can see that. a save system, like an auto save system um after the fact <laughs> but i don't know that was the one aspect of the game where i i feel it's the most weird and it's just because it's mostly because i've played so many nes games over the past couple of years especially kind of like researching and learning about the system that i just got used to the idea of well nes games don't have saves like that's yeah. it's normal but it's not normal anymore and it's interesting because you're making an nes game but in modern times, so it's like, where do you yeah. fall on that then? Do you want it to be... I mean, I kind of like that it um, more embodied the feel of games back then, which I think is more of the intention of making a game on an mm -hmm. old system is... I mean, in one sense, you could see what, how far can we go with this? And the other sense is making something that's of the era. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I wanted to try to do something interesting with that concept. And in some ways, it it made the passwords feel antagonistic to people, like just that I'm I'm being mean to them or or making fun of them by not having it save what people expect <laughs> exactly. Um, and I don't I don't intend it in that way, but I I see how it comes across that way. And I don't know, you you make a a work that a lot of people play, you get a lot of different viewpoints on it. I think you're always going to get different viewpoints no matter what the game is because everyone has different tastes and what they want and everything. Yeah. Because like I could appreciate and... something like that but like someone else could absolutely hate it because yeah. they just want to play as many video games as possible and anything that slows them down and beating a game means the game is bad. Hmm. Um, yeah there's so many the hard, like for me the hard part of game design is making decisions where um, if you go too far one way, you know, one person's going to like it and one person's going to hate it and vice versa. Like there's just, there's so many times where you just have to pick, um, kind of pick who's this game I want to allow 
to sacrifice for a good thing that yeah. someone else will like. Well, it makes um, a lot of sense because you can't up make it constantly. Forever. And it's, I don't know, it's just it's it's taxing. It's it's something I think have to think hard about a lot. And then even after making a decision, I'm never sure if there is a right decision or if I made the right one. I don't know. I think it's like that with a lot of things in life. Like, I mean, uh, when, it, when it comes to streaming and whatnot, if I play certain types of games, that's going to turn off a lot mm -hmm. of my audience who enjoy me and make a lot of people happy. And then I'll play something else. Yeah. And then I'll make a different group of people not want to watch and be bored for that night or not want to come by. And another group mm -hmm. totally happy and excited that I'm playing it, you know? And really, there's no way for me to do something that makes 100% people happy. So it's just sometimes you got to make a choice. Yeah, it's also kind of like how there's so many different reviews with Super Ledge Hop say, either saying the dialogue is the best thing ever or the, the dialogue is the worst thing they've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> See, I enjoy it. I love the dialogue in Super Ledge Hop. I thought it was adorable. But I'm sure there's some people who yeah. don't like that, so you know. Yeah, I, I can I can totally see it. I can totally see it. <laughs> and I think you I just really need to lean into what you really want to do. <laughs> it's been sitting at the top of my my Steam games for a little while, but I haven't gotten to it yet. Dude, don't worry about it. As <laughs> long as as long as we homies, that's the best thing that matters. <laughs> All right. Actually, All right, well... um. It's kind of funny. Well, I should mention, so the game I worked on um, earlier this year, and it's actually just coming out, I think pre-orders might start like in a matter of days. Ooh. Uh, but I worked on a Metroidvania NES game that has a battery save <laughs> this year. Um, and I was like, I didn't design this game, but I did all the programming for it. Uh, and it's called Always Awakening. Um, and it's actually, it came out on Steam and Switch. Um, it might be on other platforms, but like a couple of years ago, I think 2017 it came out. And it was, it was retro style. Like they did it um, with graphics that looked pretty NES. And actually they made the music in Famitracker. Oh, nice. uh, so all the music sounds perfectly NES. Yeah. Um, and they hired me to make it happen on the NES, um, Whoa. which is really cool, and we did it, and that, like that was a great project for me. Like I really liked, I liked not having to be responsible for everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but it's funny, like the the kinds of things I was trying to avoid doing in Lizard, like this, it very much embraces the Metroidvania genre, and it does right. a lot of the normal things. Um, but so like this game does have a battery save and it does have like things that you accumulate all over the place that add to your powers and stuff like that. Um, right. And it's a very nice game. Like I'm, I'm really happy about it. I was kind of surprised. Oh, what were you saying? Well, what game is this? I, I, I want to see. It's called Always Awakening. Maybe I should uh, drop a link in chat. Yeah, sure. let's, let's show that with your lizard. <laughs> Uh, here we are. Bring up the website. That's really cool, though. They wanted to have it, like, actually on the NES after making it NES-styled. Yeah, they told me, like... They... All right, the, the link's, <laughs> link's in chat. Uh, just send a link to me, and I'll, I'll, I'll pop it in chat for you. Oh. Do you want it? Over they here. Send, it, send it to me through the through the Discord, and I'll yeah. There it is. We have to we have to keep <laughs> links. <laughs> well, you, you know how it is. There there we go. All, all was awakening. <laughs> oh, are they they shadow hidden? Yeah. Yeah, shadow the, the link the links have to be hidden because for for obvious obvious reasons on Twitch now, unfortunately. So. Hmm. Um, yeah. So that's so sick. So, I was surprised by that because. I've been I've been working with the NES platform for a while, and at this point, I think I was used to like seeing things that I've made appear on the NES and on my like just coming out of that thing on running on a CRT or whatever I'm doing, playing with that classic controller. Um, seeing this game come to come together, I wasn't expecting to feel, you know, like that the 
I don't know, just like the magical feel of the NES. I wasn't expecting to feel that way about this game because I was making it, I knew what was going to happen, but it still did. I feel really good about this game. Oh, that's amazing. I, like, I think it's a great NES game. I definitely want to try it out from, from you know, seeing that you're working on it and uh, what it looks like and everything. It seems like it's really cool. And it's it was also, like, it's a really nice game just on, on Steam, like, if you want to play the original version. Um, but, um, yeah, like, they we had to... They decided to cut all the rooms. So it's a game, like, each room in the game is, like, one screen. But it was made for modern screens, so they were, like, widescreen rooms. So they had right. to, like, redesign all the levels so that every room's kind of the same, but... Oh, yeah, down a little bit. Gotta make them mm -hmm. And so that was like a huge redesign task for them. That, Luckily, would, that like, would be I didn't have to do that. <laughs> that wasn't my I problem. Had... I just had to get it working on the end. <laughs> yeah. Well, it must actually, have been a lot of work, yeah. At first, like, we, I, I made a, a demo for them of like scrolling rooms to see what that would look like. So we could keep the same rooms, but like scroll back and forth. Ah. But because you couldn't see like the whole room, they didn't really like that. They wanted it to to be kind of the same experience of you look at a room and here's your puzzle, try to figure out how to get through it. That makes a lot of sense. So there's not like a piece of the puzzle that's slightly off screen. You got to scroll back and forth to do it. And that makes yeah. sense. And right. uh, uh, the music came over great because of Family Tracker, like because it was made. Oh, so that's easy. Yeah. That's fantastic. So uh, listen, I I would uh, we got more interview to do, of course, but uh, we have we have some unfinished business over here that yeah. we need to attend to. Tara and I have a salty session that we need to get into. Brad, would you would you be so kind as to commentate the salty session for us this week? Sure. Awesome. Well, in that case, it is time then for us to head over to the wheel of the salty session this is where chair and i must go head to head in a competition that will be decided through the wheel chair g yeah. tables what is on the wheel this week Ah, uh, listen, we got capcom versus snk let me tell you guys something you know roll back for Sega, Naomi, and Dreamcast games have come this week. It wasn't and working for we us yet. So <clears throat> yeah, it wasn't working for us though, but it's still maybe on the wheel. soon, TM. <laughs> it's still Thank on you. the wheel. It's still on the wheel. You know, me and Vox, we both have a great connection, both in internet and our personal lives. So... <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, Chair. Very nice. <laughs> I think it'll be funny. <laughs> what else we got here? And we. We got Magical Drop 3. Oh, this this one has been waiting for quite a bit been... now, but yeah, but you know what has been waiting for even longer? Toy Fighter SM. That's will true. They've been just sitting on a wheel like that. Chosen? Yeah. <laughs> when will it happen? But you, but you know, listen, something something got brought back because of all the cool homies in chat right here. You know what it is. It's it's third strike. Shout outs to all the people on Patreon. Shout, shout the outs to the executive gamers on Patreon deciding the wheel. Yeah. yeah. Big shout outs. And oh oh my gosh, of course we got Ultra Fight the Kianta too. Guys, listen. I think I've become strong now. <laughs> but, but but maybe Vox can still defeat me. We'll see about possibly, that. Possibly, possibly. I'll just, I'll just do what happened to you in the tournament. Ha ha ha. That's <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What's, what's the last item? <laughs> yeah, it's a Sailor Moon S. I'll tell you guys later what happened about that. That's Love Sailor Moon S. This is great. All right. Uh, Brad, is there anything on the wheel you are hoping that it lands on? Um, I'm really curious about Toy Fighter. Ah, another person who wants Toy Fighter to show up. Well... Perhaps this will be the time it finally does appear, but that's not up to us. It is up to the wheel. Gamers and gentlemen, say it with me. God, God bless, bless the, wheel. the wheel. Here we go. Yeah. 
I forgot to take a breath before I did that. Oh, oh. Ooh, it's magical drop three. It shows oh, it wow, before finally. a toy fighter. It, Are you it did. Me? It did. Poor toy fighter. Poor <laughs> toy fighter. All right. It's time for us to go set this up. So while we get the game ready, please enjoy this short break right now. Hey! Hey, you! Over here! Hey there, it's me. Me, Tito. You ever heard of this cool game called Super Ledge Hop Double Laser? The game where you can do all sorts of cool things, like this awesome ability where you can absorb enemy bullets. And then you can use the bullets you absorb as your own. In addition to that, you can shoot to the beat of the song. Your attacks will be much stronger. Oh my gosh, I didn't know I could do that. W what do you mean? Have you been listening to everything your super cool uncle taught you? Uh, I thought I can just reflect bullets. No, you cheesehead! There's a lot of things you can do with that shine. You can absorb, reflect, cancel your OP special move while maintaining your momentum. So I can wave shine? Yeah, just like wave shining. So prepare your wallets, because for the cost of one dollar fast food burger, all of this intense action could be yours. Only here at Super, Super Ledge Hop Double, Double Laser. Laser. Hello everyone and welcome to the Salty Session as I get the game. Oh, oh here there it is. There it is, just like that. Are, all we, right. are we using this game outside of Japan? Yeah, know, shout outs to Data East. I don't know what you're talking about. We're, we're in, we could be in Japan. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know that. All right, everyone. It's time for Magical Drop 3. This will be a best three out of five games or whatever. Um, I don't remember who the good characters are, Chair. But that's okay. Here we go. I'm just going to pick. I know who I'm going to pick. For those who oh, don't know how to play. We, naked uh, woman. We grab the orbs or balls or whatever and we yeet them back up and like yeeting uh, groups of three and whatnot make them get destroyed and then we send things over and whatnot and that's how that's how the puzzle game works and it's quite fun makes sense yeah makes let's sense. do this uh verse wait did you hit start um i guess just go to versus cpu and i'll press start oh yeah maybe i have to go here and then you like then you press start Okay, start something, uh, and I'll press start. I gotta pick the Empress. Uh, are you hitting start? You're playing as the Empress. Um, start, start a match, and I'll just press start. Okay. There. Okay. Oh, <laughs> we we couldn't start until all the way over here. That's just funny. Yeah. All right. Definitely playing the. Oh. I mean, come on, everyone. Look at the Empress. That's yeah, that's I, definitely I, a me character. I gotta use the. The Pachuli character. Empress versus the High Priestess. And what button was what? There we go. Chair gets an early match. Alexandra catching up. Oh, no. <laughs> this is looking a little bit dangerous for Chair. Uh-oh. I died! Oh, there we go. SMH. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Let's do this. Dato. Another one begins. Oh, wrong button. Oh no, wrong button. I hit the wrong button. Oh my god. Oh wait, no, I still won. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. I thought I lost. No. Yeah. 
that left column gets chair again. Okay. I what took game one. <laughs> I took game one. I took game one. <laughs> no, I, I, I watch. It's just like a vortex gallery where I, I absorb your play. You absorb I, my play. I, I absorb, okay, yeah. sure. Breaking down a complicated column on the left there. And it's still coming. This match has been a bit more even. Cleared up her field pretty well. The pressure's on for her chair. Damn, I'm so dumb. Oh. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm beginning to see it. I'm beginning to see understand. it. Putting up a better fight. What was that chair? What was that? <laughs> what happened? That was too fast. Oh no, things are piling up for chair. There we go. All right, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sweep this. I'm gonna sweep this chair. I'm sweeping this. I'm sweeping this. I'm doing oh, it. Oh, is, is that is, is that it? You... I'm too. I'm embody, I'm embodying the Empress too much. Well, well, too I'm much, absorbing your knowledge. <laughs> Here's just gotta break down the columns on the left. There we go. Too much to there the we left. Go. I keep putting my junk on the left. Oh no. <laughs> Defeated by left junk. Boom! Get out of here! Get out of here! Wow. <laughs> Let's do this. I'm I'm sweeping this. I'm sweeping this. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm sweeping it. Chair's chunk has not been suitably contained. Done. 
Done. Oh yeah, Done. I, 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 I... It's over. <laughs> I always die for... Oh, was that three? That was three. You just that got beat, I think, nine rounds in a row. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, chair. Um... Uh, GG, chair. I think, uh... <laughs> I'm surprised. I thought I thought you would uh I thought you might take a round. I don't know. Uh, listen, Vox, I <laughs> Yeah in puzzle games. If I could do three, that's enough to satisfy me. <laughs> <laughs> if I could do a three chain, that's that's makes me smile already. <laughs> well, you put in you put in a decent effort chair, um Sorry that you got absolutely obliterated, GG's. <laughs> Better luck next time. I keep dying to, oh, I built too much to the left. <laughs> uh, Brad, thank you. Thank you so much for commentating this week's Salty Session. And uh, we'll be back with more interview after this. Oh my gosh. Game development takes up so much time. I wish I didn't have to sleep so I can keep working on Hazuki Dai's even more and finish it faster. Imagine all the time I can spend on money matches. Wait, I know! Time for some X chicken! Chicken nuggets that give you maximum energy! I have so much energy now that I don't even need sleep! And I can do game that so much fast! Welcome back, everyone! To the Vox Off show. <laughs> uh, so, bro. Brad, will you get X Chicken to make <laughs> sure that Owl's <laughs> Awakening will get finished 100% really good? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I hadn't heard about X Chicken until now. They looked they looked pretty good. I think I'm in the mood for some I, X Chicken. I'm in I'm in a big mood for that. I, I lost in Windjammers, I lost in Jackie Chan, and I now I lost to you. I got sweet by you! <laughs> Nine zero, yeah, yeah, I don't think- you didn't take a round, did you? No! I was close! Once! That was what, yeah, one the touch round was, it was a good fight, I thought. <laughs> you know, that's why all O2 were safe. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it went O3, but uh, that was, it was close. <laughs> <laughs> that was close that one round where like I thought I lost, but actually you did. Rip. <laughs> Big rip. <laughs> I've, I've oh, seen a man. lot of new developments in, in chicken nuggets lately, like Burger King was doing their Beyond Meat Chicken. Beyond or whatever meat. it was called. And then and then McDonald's goes in for the spicy chicken and now X chicken. Yeah. Oh do them all. This is our response to it. This is us capitalizing on we're, we're the We're firing back trends. with X chicken. Listen, <laughs> yeah. it, who needs sleep when you could just eat X chicken, right? Yeah, I, I would need that. <laughs> oh man. So uh so Brad, why don't you uh why don't you tell us a little bit about Espetra? Oh, Espetra. <laughs> You're the other runner? Yes, I'm the the second place um world record holder for Espetra's speedrun. <laughs> it's true. You are the chair, you're in the presence of the two best Espetra speedrunners in the world. Oh my god. You're you also have the I... honor of being in the presence of the only two Espetra speedrunners in the world. <laughs> yeah, no, these are these are only legends. Like, you know, I, I need you know, it's one of those I might be in a holy place right now then. <laughs> Holy place. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny. I actually, I, I met, uh, Brad, Brad and I met each other because I I streamed a Spectra once and it was like the first time I, I noticed that, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. Uh, to explain what a Spectra is, it's a DOS RPG that I played the shareware of when I was a kid. And then I decided to play it again as an adult. Like, oh, I remember that game. That was kind of cool. I'm going to play it. And it was a DOS game like that that um 
styled itself over like console JRPGs of the time. And it's it's a very straightforward QRPG that was made by a teenager in like 96 or something for DOS. And there was no playthrough of it online. Nothing. I, I looked online all over. The closest there was was someone who's like, all right, I'm starting my let's play of a Spectra and it's like 15 minutes long. No other videos ever again. Like they were they were just done. Like 15 minutes of a Spectra, I'm out. And so I was actually, I have the first recorded playthrough of the game on the internet as we're aware of. And the second person to ever have one, hilariously enough, not too long after mine, was Brad. Whoa. Yeah, I, well, I also, at the time, I thought I was the first person to be putting a playthrough of it online. <laughs> Actually, well, you had, I think you had your VOD up on Twitch. Yeah, my VOD was up on Twitch first, but not on YouTube. Yeah, when I started playing it, you hadn't put it on YouTube. And, you know, I was only playing like once every once in a while. Um, so it was like over several weeks that I went through it. But by the time I had done, you, you would put up your playthrough and I had realized, like, you had already finished it before I had. <laughs> and, and I hadn't, I wouldn't have been able to find that if I had started, like, well, like, I started before you had uploaded it. So, like, I, I didn't know about it until halfway through my playthrough. I look up a Spectra on YouTube just to see if anything's changed and it had. <laughs> and I, I had, I'd taken the Twitch VODs and put them over to YouTube. So then they finally showed up. Um... But that game for me, so I, I mentioned earlier that like a, a lot of what I learned about making games and programming I did on DOS. Um, so in the, the late 90s, uh, when I got the internet, or I guess I should say mid 90s, I don't know what year it was, maybe 97, I got the internet. And all of a sudden I had access to all this information that I didn't before. Like when I was a kid, I always went to the library. I'd pull out books on games and programming and stuff like that. But everything was 10 years out of date. Um, I took out a book on assembly programming, think it would teach me something, but it was like for this IBM mainframe computer from the 70s that like took up a whole floor of a building. And uh, that seems helpful for you, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> But then I got the internet and suddenly like there are all these people like sharing all this information about things that I like it just couldn't get access to. And I learned so much in such a short period of time, but I was heavily inspired. Like I played the game Final Fantasy four. It was called mm. Final Fantasy two on the Super Nintendo at that right. time. And it blew my mind. It was it was what I wanted. It was all the games I want. What all the games I wanted were going to be for several years after that. Like I became a mm -hmm. huge SquareSoft fan. I, I played everything that they put out that I could get my hands on. And I wanted to make a JRPG. So I like I was working on trying to figure out how to do that, I'm trying to teach myself what I needed to do that. And at the same time, I was looking at like who who is making this kind of game for DOS or whatever, because I'm learning to program on DOS. And there were a bunch of people like making little things, and most things were not really that playable. Um Espetra, so it had the shareware demo, which is easy to download, all sorts of BBSs or websites or whatever. Um and it was pretty good. It was probably the best of them. And like it's very indie. Like I'm I wouldn't say like like if you put it toe to toe with Final Fantasy VI, you know, yes. like you're you're gonna see a difference. But um it it really impressed me. I also thought I think I could do better than this. Um but at the time <laughs> I didn't know how to finish anything. Like I I might have been known how to do more programming things, but I didn't know how to finish a game. So <laughs> I was overconfident and I never finished the projects I was working on back then. But right. um, it stuck with me because like it was memorable, but it was also shareware. And it was that that era of things where it's like it's, it says like put $30 in the mail and mail it to somewhere or like North Carolina or wherever it was. And maybe you'll get a floppy disk back in the mail or I don't know how they sent it back or if anybody bought it. 
Um, but like, I didn't have any money and I wasn't going to put cash in the mail to send to the U S hoping to get something back. So I never got to see what the full game was. And then I didn't think about it for a long time, but eventually I, I found it on somewhere. I don't even remember where I found it. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere on the internet. So I found the full version. I'm like, okay, I'm going to put this away to play at some point. And yeah, I had started streaming and I thought, well, this seems like a good thing for stream. Like a game people haven't seen, a game I haven't played and I'm very curious about. So I really wanted to know what, what's the rest of the story of Vespetra. Yeah, how does, and, the, how does the rest of the story go? <laughs> and it, it was really enjoyable for me to play. Like they, there's a lot of nostalgia driving it for me, but it has charm. It, just, it does things a lot of in a weird way you know yeah that, it's very much made by a teenager yeah and that kept me going for it like it's it was pretty fun and then after seeing you speed run it it made me realize there's some things about the way it cues actions that actually make it a uh, kind of nice fun to play speed run right <laughs> To, to clarify, the, the joke that was going on here at the channel, for those who don't know, is that since I had the first playthrough, I technically was world record holder. Like, <laughs> like as a joke. And then people kept joking, speedrun is better. And I was like, no, it's terrible. And secretly, I was like planning to do it. So like April Fool's one day, I speed, I did a speed run of it. And it was, it was really funny. Like no one was really expecting that. And it just became this dumb joke that we did because we raced it on the next April Fool's Day. And that was very entertaining but yeah the way it queues up attacks is that um while it's filling up the atb bar for your action whatever inputs you do it will instantly input rapid fire so you can actually do your menuing while you're waiting for your turn and then it'll do everything immediately and it's actually kind of intriguing it's really Wait, so it's, it, one frame inputs you're basically saying like it buffers the whole time yeah. oh yeah um <laughs> It's funny because it's using the standard DOS input system, which was made for like text in free on the, the command line or whatever. So like if you press a bunch of keys, it's just, just supposed to hold on to them until the command line's reading your keys. Um, most most DOS games would replace the keyboard handling and like do custom stuff that responds immediately in the sense of it for, you know, for responsive games. Not this game though. This game is just using the standard text input system for everything. <laughs> and as a result, you can, well, you're playing the battle, you can like plan out your actions many yep. seconds in advance. Yeah. It actually led and... to, a, I was doing routing for the game, you know, routing, haha. And um, one of the things I did was I designed uh, which, I figured out which spells you pick up and don't pick up because you can just not get some spells in the game and it'll change the order of your spells in the list. So I have a purpose set up where it's the least number of inputs possible to cast Bolt 3, which is like one of the fastest spells to cast. as like one of the fastest animations while being in the higher tier of spells so that it's way quicker to input it and you mess it up less often in your menuing while queuing up everything. Oh. <laughs> I really only found out by accident during one of our runs that you can just press escape to run from battle. Yeah. Which is actually, it's funny that it's literally the escape key. <laughs> That's a game changer battle, too, like, cause yeah. It's like neither of us had ever thought to press it during battle before. <laughs> and I just, I don't know why I did it. Yeah, That's to close the game. <laughs> it worked. Escape the battle, it makes sense. And yeah, Chair, you run from, I think I have it set up so that um, you fight, it's either two or three random battles. I have to, I have to optimize it. But it's like you only fight two or three random battles for experience purposes because it'll tip you over with leveling. All the other experience you just gain from bosses and it's perfect to like go through the whole game. So you what? and running is instantaneous. It always works. So you run from uh, every single random battle except for two or three early on. That's to get it? enough experience. Yeah. I can speed you run can this run game from everything. then. Oh my gosh, this is a chair game. <laughs> it is a chair game, game actually. It is about three hours long still, but it is a chair game. <laughs> three hours. Now, if we could figure out how to skip some cutscenes. Well, actually, there is some of those instances where if you're holding a directional key, you'll run past a story trigger. 
and that usually just crashes the game but there might be a way to do that that leads to skipping something yeah there yeah there's this one story trigger that it really spooked me in my first playthrough of the game because it didn't trigger when it was supposed to the dark village uh, right which, yeah which led me to like wandering around that area for a few hours <laughs> not knowing what was gonna happen and and, and at the same time, like, it's the only area in the game, it has no random battles. It's just like you wander this big open area, which is a reference to the, the previous game <laughs> that the developer had made. <laughs> but I never heard of or played that game before. Um, so if you had played that game before, you would get there and you'd be like, oh, it's that village that I was in from the first one. But in just playing it, being the first experience of the game like i had no idea what it was I'm like why is this here there's just no context for it is this the i was wondering if this was the end of the game if the developer had just like given up at this point because there are no <laughs> random battles like i had no idea i had no idea if the game was finishable and then so i'm just wandering around and then i wander back into the town and that trigger is all of a sudden and it just like it scared me because I, <laughs> I did not see it coming out of nowhere it just happened I don't know. And yeah, I, I ended up really enjoying playing through it in a way, in ways they completely didn't expect. It and definitely has charm to it. Would, I would love to see other people play it. I keep trying to convince other people to play it, but nobody does. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not surprised. I've, I've flown it past a few people in the past and uh, no takers yet to play as Spectra. Yeah, submit it for <laughs> RPG Limit Break. Submit it to RPG Limit Break. <laughs> <laughs> that would that would be really funny. Do you, do you think they would accept a Spectra for DOS, the first JRPG on DOS? Just try it. Just try it. <laughs> I'll be that one person who is always talking in chat. <laughs> it, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't even, I'm sure there's things you could do in that game that would make the speed run way faster, but like no one plays it. So it's just like, it's just this optimal pathing and running from every battle. Oh yeah, With, like, that's, a few... that's another thing that happened. Like I ended up um, taking apart all the game files just because I was curious what was it. Like after playing it, I'm like nobody, there's no maps of this game out there. So I made some, I made maps, mm. figured out the data formats. Um, but I also learned that this thing was made with Quick Basic, which is like the the kind of pro version of QBasic for dot that came with MS DOS. Oh. Um, where like, if anyone's not familiar with Basic, it's like a thing you can make your own simple programs. It's a simple programming language that just came with computers, so you could like type in stuff and see what happens. Um, and that's Basic was actually how I learned to program. And I'd actually uh, gotten frustrated with basic because it's like, I thought it was primitive and not what you make games with. It's like really slow and um, stuff like that. So I learned C, which I heard was fast and it is faster. And you have much more direct control over everything and the hardware and all that. But uh, I thought I couldn't make the game I wanted to make in C. And then I find out Spectra had been made in basic the whole time. <laughs> they had the same tools I did, and they finished a game, <laughs> and I didn't. Well, I was trying to learn how to, like, control all of the little detailed things about the hardware. They were just cruising along, finishing a game, making the content <laughs> that actually you need to do to finish a game. Just think, you could have made an RPG back then where one of the enemies in, the in one of the final secret dungeons was... A, a black and white picture of the girl you had a crush on <laughs> with their name backwards <laughs> yeah throughout the whole game there's all these um like hearts around uh initials in the grass and stuff yeah like i heart um, c nc and i guess nc is colleen or knee lock <laughs> appears in the dungeon yeah, the name Colleen backwards is Neelock and it's an enemy and it casts Love Trip on you or something. Oh yeah, Mind Trip and it says Mind Trip it, and it, it says love. It says love in a, a bunch of times and it does a ton of damage to you. It's just the most powerful enemy in the game. 
<laughs> it's freaking hilarious. Yeah, I put my crush in the game, which is like totally a thing a teenager would do then, right? <laughs> I, I wonder, like, I have to wonder how much she knew about this in the game, or like if she knew, or... I bet she has no clue. I bet there's someone named Colleen out there who has no idea what? that, like, a yearbook what? picture of her from what? 96 is in an old-ass DOS RPG. Wait, wh but wouldn't you, like, like, you know, you know, if I, if I imagine myself to be the one who made that game, I would give it to the girl I like. But um, like, like, would the girl? This is my feelings for you. But what if? <laughs> what if she didn't like play through to the end of the game and find it? That's <laughs> the end of this fucking game in a dungeon that's actually optional. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> and it's also hard to tell if like the mind trip is is this like a post breakup kind of thing or? Yeah, it's is, is it like love does damage to you or was that at the end and the I heart C's were already in the game? Sorry, we gotta ship it. Can't remove <laughs> Wait, but what if what if this game led to their possible marriage? That is doubtful. That's the best ending! And we'll what not if he go the, into that the best chair. Ending? We're just I think we can definitively say that's not true, and we're not gonna elaborate on that. No. <laughs> let's. Let, okay, I'm let's... taking notes. Don't make a game about my crush. <laughs> yeah, let's let's let, let's just uh. Let's not go down that road for 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 good reasons. Uh, well, Brad, I think it's I think it's time for us to move on to the. Q&A section where the people from oh. our chat can ask us questions. And uh, Cherry, I believe we already have some questions for us here. Yes, we do. What do we got? Are you ready? All right, all right, all right. So this question is for you, Brad. And it okay. says right here, Brad, why do we have the same Kigu? Uh, why do we have the same Q? Because they're they're very cheap, and a lot of companies have the same pattern. Apparently, I actually have two of these, and they're exactly the same pattern, but made with different fabric. Oh, and oh, I think which I is got comfier? Like, um, maybe this one probably. It would be very funny if you said the other one. It's like why are you wearing this one then? But uh, yeah, I think it was like twenty dollars. I got it on eBay, and it just came in a plastic bag from China. A couple <laughs> weeks later, and it's appropriate, you know. You wear a lizard in the game, so you have a lizard kigu. Yeah. Um. So I actually got when when I was a kid, my mom made like a dinosaur costume like this for me and my sister. <gasps> um, and it was because I was such a huge fan of Bubble Bobble, so I wanted to be <laughs> like the dinosaur. And um, that that was kind of the long term direct inspiration for the lizard character. Like, I... oh, so you funny. wanted to be Bubby, or wait, what was his name again? Oh yeah, Bub and Bob, or Bubloon and Bobloon, mm -hmm. depending on which version you play. Wow, that turned into lizard someday. <laughs> okay, there. Okay, so I guess they are lizards. SMH. So just to confirm, in the game, it's not Vor. Um, no comment. Damn it! God damn it! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> you know, okay. Since we're I don't think it's about that. I don't. Th I don't think it's Vor. Because you're wearing the lizard. It's it's not the lizard eating you. You're, you're oh, wearing. Oh, so reverse the Vor. Well, I think it's more like parasitic. Oh, okay. Like parasitic you're, you're a parasite more. using the lizard. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I think about what the lizard is getting out of the relationship. Um. Apparently, a lot of bones. Um. 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 Maybe like when you when you fuse with someone, you know you get the best. 
you get to experience the best of them too. <laughs> okay, chair. <laughs> but you see, um, you know, this begs the question of our next question. It, it, it asks for you. What made you come up with the concept of wearing a lizard that you can take off if you want to wear another lizard? Also, what's your favorite lizard? Oh. Um, so a friend of mine actually had, like, the concept of lizard actually came from a friend of mine telling me about her dream where I forget what happened in the dream, but at the end of it, um, something weird happened and she couldn't understand something that was happening and she was holding a lizard and said my lizard is not the lizard of understanding and that was like the <laughs> end of the dream and somehow her having the wrong lizard was why she couldn't understand it in the dream and that just that phrase i really loved it and for years it was just like in the back of my mind like i'd think of that my lizard is not the lizard of whatever and then i when I was thinking about game ideas, I was thinking like, what if, what other kind of lizards are there? Could you make a game out of this? And that was basically the genesis of the idea. Um, what's my favorite lizard? I don't know. Growing up, I owned an iguana. I had a pet iguana. Eventually it ran away. Kind of sad about that. I went, I searched for it for a long time, but it never came back. But, um, I don't know, iguanas are cool, geckos are neat, it's hard to pick a favorite lizard. Or lizard in the game of lizard, it's kind of like the lizard of coffee, even though I don't really drink coffee. Wait, I'm there's a lizard of, a of coffee? Drinker. There is a lizard of coffee. There's I a missed... few extra lizards. I only remember that... the lizard of, um, lounge. That's another There's one. There's more secret lizards, and I forgot about them. <gasps> There's lizards that are not in the manual. And the lizard of coffee is one of them. <laughs> How did I never find the lizard of coffee? Oh no. Secrets. Secret lizards. How many secret lizards are there? Um, maybe three or four. Three or four? What do you mean three or four? Well, it depends how you count them. Well, there's the main six, right? Knowledge, surf, swim, eat, um, push, eat. and... Stone, I think? You push and stone, stone, yeah. Um, yeah, those are, those are the ones that are in the manual. So, like... So, like, like I talked about, I wanted the game to be kind of mysterious. Um... I figure a lot of people won't read the manual and just jump into the game. And it's, it is designed for that experience. But I also put a manual in, um, like there's a PDF, or if you buy the game, like in cartridge form, you get a printed manual. Right. But um, I wanted people to know, hey, there's six lizards, and here's a, a kind of not very detailed map of the world, just to... For people that need to, need some reinsurance that there's more out there, there's things I haven't done. Um, so I made sure that was available information, but I also wanted to make sure there there was stuff that isn't in there, so that people would never really know if they found everything. Interesting. I like At least that. Until people document it in a. <laughs> I think I think people have found everything by now, and I did release the source code for the game as well. Ah, uh, well, that'll do it too. Um, so people can find everything if they go looking, but uh, yeah, like I I did, I just wanted the same with achievements. I didn't put achievements in Steam for some of the secret lizards because then they're not secret, you know, like then they're. Right. Well, you, the you, you can set it as hidden achievements, though. Well, hidden achievements aren't really hidden, though. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted someone to go and seek these out for their own, their, their own sense of 
finding something secret rather than right oh there's a checklist over here that says there's three hidden things i haven't done yet um but i don't know i've always felt weird about achievements in games like i'm perfectly content to ignore them but i'd like to when i finish a game i like to look at the achievement list and think do it do these indicate anything like fun that i haven't done that i might want to try rather than just doing it for the sake of it yeah that makes sense so i sometimes hunt achievements not not so much for the achievement as maybe it'll be fun to try to do it right i think I, sometimes i just hunt achievements in the same sense that most a lot of people would but number go up yeah check the box off oh, did this thing <laughs> I still like that when I was playing yesterday, there was the Lizard of Stone. People were like, oh, Lizard of Stone? Oh, Lizard of Getting High? Ha ha. And I was just like, yeah, yeah, hold on. <laughs> you say that, but hold on. Uh, what, are the, what else we got, Chair? Oh, okay, okay. All right, Brad, listen. Do you have... I, I mean, do you know the WarioWare series? And what are your thoughts about it? Um, I've played. I forget which WarioWare game I played. It was on Wii. If I oh, smooth moves! One. It's smooth moves. The first game to feature the best character there, Penny Krygor. Oh, Here, just very inspirational knows. character. I I actually haven't I haven't owned a WarioWare game, but I liked playing it the the times that I did. Um, it's pretty neat, like that concept of just like very short. Um tasks to try and figure out on the spot yes. um but i've never i've never tried to work on a game like that it does seem like a lot of a lot of times like when developing a game you you make a system that does a thing and then you want to use it a thousand times to make make yeah good and this it. one is different all the time <laughs> and yeah. yeah like a game like warrior where it inverts that it's like you're making a thousand games it's it's most of the work of the game <laughs> types of thousand i don't know but maybe they find ways to do that more efficiently like a lot of them have similarities of course but yeah it does seem like an overwhelming thing though yeah i've actually never played a warioware game oh it's fun it's fun the the new one just released a few days ago actually yeah i saw they are exceptional party games i'd say oh interesting mm -hmm. yeah if we ever have parties again yeah, remember parties? <laughs> That's some H. What else we got, Chair? Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, this is for all of us. Is there a prototype or a demo that you hold near and dear to your heart? Prototype or demo? Was that question for me or was it for it's for, for all, all of us, us. Oh, all us. of you go first brad you have an answer <laughs> um i don't know like i mentioned like canceled games i don't actually have a prototype anymore i don't know if anybody does but like the alien game that i worked on that was like my first project uh after working on that for oh, i don't know how long like a year and a half or two years uh it was really neat. I I would have liked to see where that game had gone. It was nowhere near done, so I can't say right. it's... <laughs> That's a shame, though, um, that it just ended and you can't really do anything about that. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a many million dollar question to find out what it actually would have been. <laughs> and <laughs> that is true. Was not gonna That's very true. That. Uh, what about you, Chair? Um, <laughs> if if I'm gonna choose something that people will recognize, it's gonna be Cheetah Man 2. I want- <laughs> I want to know how it ends! It, it, it's- it, it soft locks after you beat the second boss. Cheetah Man 2? Oh my yes, god. I appreciate you calling music? Cheetah Man 2 a prototype. There's a patch <laughs> for that one. Yeah, but it still doesn't really, like, end. Does it, it doesn't not? exactly end. I, I only know that there's a patch, but I didn't, I don't know what actually happens if you play it. <laughs> oh yeah, I, 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 I mean you, it, it, like you can get you can get further, but nothing really happens. <laughs> oh. 
All right, chair. Well, yeah, um, if... the cheetah men destroy the enemy, and the gamer is freed from the video dimension, and all is well in the end. And all the cheetah men thank thank the gamer for the help. That's cheetah men one, but that's oh. what about cheetah men two? Um, um, the gamer gets the ability to turn into a cheetah man at will, and can oh, then but... hang out with the cheetah men homies as a cheetah if they want to. <laughs> That's the thing. The yeah. gamer does not exist in Cheetah Men 2. No, you you <laughs> find you find the gamer in Cheetah Men 2 later. They got sucked back oh, in the game. Oh, I see. But but, I but see. they but they gain the Cheetah Men powers, and then you play as a fourth Cheetah Man, who is the gamer and has the powers of all three Cheetah Men. Oh. And that's how you fight the final boss. Are we making this game? <laughs> I I think it's done. That's it. it, it it's there. It just doesn't work. Sorry. <laughs> There you go. I saw. I solved it. Chair, are you happy now? I gotta ask the developers if that's what they oh want. Oh my god! <laughs> I have to talk to the developers of Cheetah Men too. Um, they did for... do a re-release of that game, like a reissue of it. Yeah, didn't a couple they? years ago. I think oh yeah, I remember one that one, but I don't know if it ever went through. Oh, it did. Like, you, I think you can still buy it. It's ex fairly expensive. Um. I think I have a friend who backed that and got it. Do I forget all the details of it? What the yeah, heck? But they, they said they fixed it so that you can finish it. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I did not buy it. I was not... I was not curious at that price that they were <laughs> charging for it. Yeah, I think, like, if there's any favorite demo or anything, it would be, like, some of the shareware games that I played as a kid. But I don't really have a specific answer for that because I played a lot of shareware back then. I think what's shareware... Maybe maybe Castle of the Winds, the uh, the game, the chairware game that uh, later in life spawned the Yitras. Perhaps Ooh. perhaps that's it. I don't know. It's hard to that say. I'll I'll, I'll think of something. But do you have any other questions that we can uh, quickly get through? Okay, 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 okay. Oh wait, let me see what's this new. Oh, all right. Let's let's quickly go through each of these. Because these are a bit more simpler questions. All right, okay. what's your main game to play? Uh, main game to play? Uh, either yeah. well, it used to be Beat Mania. I'd like to get back to it, but um, probably you know, Romantic Saga Reuniverse, the mobile game. I always have running, and just Saga in general. So that'll be my answer. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, well, I guess I play Battle Toads every week. <laughs> I'm still doing that. I got in the habit of it, and I, I just really like the game. <laughs> it's, nice. I'm trying to deathless it. I've been playing Cookie Clicker, if playing in the in the the small sense that you play an idle game. Yeah. So every once in a while, I check it and click a few things. Uh, and actually, I've been playing chess a lot lately, which I hadn't in years, uh -huh. but it uh, it became interesting again to me recently, and I'm having a lot of fun, kind of getting better at chess than. That's really cool. Ancient game. Mm -hmm. I don't have a main game. <laughs> Chair, Chair just plays everything. Yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't I, think of myself as having a main game because I tend to play. I tell like a variety of things. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I mean, like, look how many tournaments I compete for Vortex Gallery slash Anime Evo, yeah, and how true. many games I speed run. <laughs> it's very, very true. <laughs> There's not a single game I really stick with. <laughs> I, I would like to get into more into Final Fantasy fourteen though. I, I would I would love to do like the end game content and stuff. Like that would be a ton of fun for me, but it still feels daunting, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. All uh, right. We got time for like one more question. Okay, okay, okay. Alright. So Dragon's Lair is one of the most challenging laser discs. Would you ever consider playing Dragon's Lair and what would you consider is the worst that worst death animation in the video game? Chair cannot use similes or metaphors to answer this question. That's D. <laughs> what is that stipulation for chair? Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is amazing. Um, I don't know if I would consider that. I have no attachment to Dragon's Lair. Um, I'd be more likely to play like old FMV games and stuff, because those are more interesting to me. But Dragon's Lair is um it's cool for what it is, and it's neat, but it's not my thing, so I probably wouldn't. 
I actually own the Blu-ray version of Dragon's Ooh. Lair, which you can play through like a Blu-ray remote, <laughs> a Blu-ray player, which is Amazing. probably the worst way to play it. <laughs> I um, would imagine. What's the input latency on your uh, <laughs> Blu-ray controller? Yeah, but um, I don't know. When, when I was a kid, I saw a Space Ace being demoed on oh. an Atari ST in a store. I was like, I want that game, but it, it required hardware that we didn't have. Mm. I think it needed like the one meg, one megabyte of RAM, which we weren't going to get. So much RAM. So I just stared at it in the store. Like it was the most, it was one of the like most amazing, like looking animated things that I'd seen for the system at the time, you know, like that time right. when just seeing cool images happening um, was pretty rare. But I don't know. I, I can't even remember any of the animations from... Yeah, I don't remember them. Unless we're talking like the NES game where you like touch a wall and turn to bones. Oh, yeah. I, that's, that's, you know, that's why I was just about to say I'm more attached to the NES version than the laser disc because of the bones. Wait, wait. <laughs> is that an analogy? No, I don't think that's an analogy. Okay, okay. I think we're safe. I think we're safe. <laughs> Actually, there's a, there's a, Commodore 64 and uh, ColecoVision um, version of Dragon's Lair, which actually looks like the most fun iteration of Dragon's Lair games. Like, it's huh. kind of neat. It's like the NES game a little bit, but with more variety and more responsiveness. Wait, but but do you, cool. do you turn into bones if you touch the door? You might. This is I think important. there are bones. There's definitely it, it, bones. It's, it's only going to be memorable to me if it has that feature. It's, Listen, what it means what a lot to thing. me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. Well, well, thank you everyone who submitted your questions. Uh, we appreciate it. It's always fun to answer them. Um, Brad, thank you so much for coming on the show. Do you have anything you would like to uh, say before you go? Uh, can't think of anything, but uh, thanks for having me. But I guess that everyone can watch you over at uh, twitch.tv slash Sakanakao. Ah, uh, yes. I do stream from now and from time to time. <laughs> like I said, I've been playing Battletoads every Saturday for a long time now. And, well, that's my most regular stream. And I would recommend people uh, get Lizard. You, you can see a link in chat there, lizardnes.com, um, which is also available, like, like you said, on Steam and other stuff. And uh, it's a ton of fun. I absolutely recommend it. I think it's extremely enjoyable. So I, I would I would say to go play Lizard. My Lizard is the Lizard of Shell. <laughs> there it is. But thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. This was this was a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. tables yes. it has it has been another wonderful episode of the vox off show wouldn't you say so yes yes it is terry <laughs> what do you have going on this week oh, oh lay it on oh, us you know you know i'm putting lizard on my plate this week Are yeah. you? i would love to see you play lizard I will at least touch it i will at least touch it i might i might want to stream this in the future when i have time <laughs> true true I would, I would like to see that though. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, no, no. I, 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 I kind of spoiled it for myself. <laughs> but oh, we oh, you watching a speedrun or something? <laughs> and, I did. You should have waited till you played it. You should have waited. Um, <laughs> I have some fun stuff going on this week. Uh, I believe this Saturday will be the Mega Man X Mid Month Marathon. Oh, as it the middle is? of the month approaches. Uh, tomorrow I believe I'm playing Puzzle Fighter with O Girls. Whoa, I believe really? O-Girls is coming oh on to play God. some Puzzle Fighter. I'm excited. I gotta, I gotta de-rust and get ready for that. Oh, gotta got de-rust and get ready. I will have to witness that. 
I will witness that. You will witness that? I think, I think it should be fun. But uh, that's going to be it for all of us for this week on the Vox Off show. I believe we had something happen during, however. Um, thank you so much, DSK's Mother Finn Emporium, for subscribing. Very much appreciated. Enjoy your emotes of my face and, more importantly, of Kingston. Oh. And, uh, yeah, thank you all so much. And we'll we'll see you again next week here at smell the Box you. Off Show. Did we get to say smell you oh. later? Uh, yeah. You were going to say, <laughs> say goodnight properly, chair. <laughs> Okay, guys, I will, I will set you on the bed, put the blanket over you, and smooch you good night. I, I was about to cut you off. I wasn't sure where that was going. Um, you're gonna tuck them in and, and give them a, a kiss in the forehead. Yes, and a and a and a, and a jug of milk. And a jug. Of milk. <laughs> Is it almond milk? Give him the jug of nut milk. Yeah. All right, we're out of here. Have it. We're out of here. Oh my god. This video was brought to you by the power and the support of the mighty executive gamers, who are known as Adam Admar, as well as the licensed gamers, who go by the names of Aberrant Lagomorph, Gaijin, Lissa, Madam Melody. Let it also be known that these gamers. Oh, they are certified gamers. Do you also wish to become a gamer who is certified? Head on over to patreon.com slash voxandra to pledge your support today and you can become a gamer who is certified.